Welcome to the Business Results Program. This is how you can transform yourself, your team, and your whole company. My name is Pete Wynarski. I'm the CEO of Win Enterprises, LLC. And this video is us recording a podcast episode. Podcast Business Results Radio. Look up businessresultsradio.com or go check it out on iTunes or one of the other podcast platforms. And do subscribe and do give a five-star review. Now, you as a business leader, we get what you're going through. You've got overwhelm and stress and frustration. You have high expectations on your shoulders, some of which you put there yourselves. Why can I say this? Because we, our team, we've experienced this ourselves. We have been business leaders. We know what it's like. And boy, how cool is it that you have this resource. You can listen to this podcast, gain some insights about what you can do differently, gain some ideas, some strategies that you can put in place right away to make your life easier. That's what we're after. We want your life to be easier because being a business leader does not have to be this challenging, doesn't have to be this hard. And we want you to exceed your expectations, excel and achieve the results you want, get your team to thrive and your company to just absolutely go right through the roof. And you can do that here. Enjoy this episode. Hey, Pete, again, real quick, this is a special part of our Business Results Radio podcast. I'm part of a panel for leadership skills and development at this workshop as part of the Fabtech Expo. And I want to introduce you to the, each of the other speakers and do some teaser content for you. So whether you can make the Fabtech Expo in person or not, you'll get an opportunity here to get to know some of these people and their content. High power, get to know you in terms of leadership skills and development. FabtechExpo.com if you're interested in learning more, it's the education program on that site. And listen away here at Business Results Radio and Business Results TV. Hi everyone, Pete Wynarski here, and I am the CEO of Win Enterprises. And today, this is a special podcast episode where I'm actually part of a leadership panel uh, for a Fabtech conference coming up here in Chicago, and I am interviewing the different panelists. So today we've got Mark Ernst with us. Mark, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Pete. Really good. Thank you. How are you? Fantastic. And Mark, you're out on the West Coast somewhere, is that right? Yes, I am. And just uh, about four miles north of Long Beach, so kind of halfway between LA and Orange County. Excellent, which, which means that you could get away with wearing like short sleeve, comfortable clothes all year round. Yes. <laughs> it's short, yeah, I'm in shorts probably 11 months out of the year. <laughs> no need to apologize for that ever. <laughs> well, I grew up in Chicago, so, you know, I know what it's like to, you know, be 25 below zero and freezing. Well, there you go. And so, you know, we're, we're heading back to Chicago together in November. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know you won't be wearing shorts, <laughs> you know, in those, uh, in that <laughs> Fantastic. So on, on this panel, Mark, you're actually speaking on two different occasions over right. the half day exercise. And one of those is about delegating and the whole delegation strategy. So, you know, the, the concept of leadership and Mark, you're diving into delegation right. first, and then you're uh, secondly, how to become that unforgettable leader, right? Who's that leader that people always remember. So let's let's talk about what you're going to talk about. So let's get into delegation. Sure. What I have found with so many clients that I've worked with over the years is, is you got so many leaders who don't get the concept of delegation. They don't understand why they should do it. They don't understand how to do it. And if they have done it and it's not gone well, they're convinced it doesn't work. Mm. Uh, and so what I try to take people through is give them steps to follow that you can do these steps and, and do an effective delegation. But I also go through, let's talk about why people don't delegate. You know, a lot of those are kind of personal. People hold on to stuff. Uh, gee, it's going to take the new guy longer. Uh, you know, and deep down inside, it's probably, what's somebody going to think of me if somehow somebody else can do what I can do and maybe do it better. Right. Yeah, this is the, the whole thing about, I don't have time to hire the person I need because I'm so busy doing their work for them and now I can't get anything else done. 
That's right. It's, you know, it's a bit of a martyr syndrome. Uh, and, and what I try to help people show is, look, at if you're really going to be the leader, you've got to build the bench strength. You've got to be able to replace yourself. And the best leaders, the organization can run when they're not there. Absolutely. So you talked a, a moment ago just about why people might not. What's the biggest risk that you see if someone just doesn't bother to even try or they tried and they gave up? What's the risk to them and the organization if they just stop delegating? You know, one is going to be uh, anyone in, above them, their boss has to begin to recognize maybe they're not the right leader. Maybe they're as far as they can go. Hmm. The second thing is anybody who's got any capability on that person's team has got to be saying, wait a minute, I'm not getting developed. I'm not getting groomed. This is the job I'll be in essentially until the guy above me leaves. And so I going to have to leave the organization to find a better job. It creates a dead end. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, so delegating clearly is important. And during the FabTech conference and this leadership time spot that you have, you're going to get into all of the steps and the how-tos and whatnot. Um, right. If there was one teaser thing that's most important for someone to know right now, even, even though they could still go to your session, if they're not there, one thing, what's most important? Well, we give out a tool which allows you to, 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 in an organized way, prepare for a delegation. You know, let me make sure I know what I'm delegating. Is it delegable? Uh, who am I going to give it to? How do I know they can do it? And before you even sit down, you can do some self-assessment of your team member and have it pretty well organized so that you're ready to go. Uh, the second thing I find is often when somebody delegates, they delegate responsibility, but not authority. Ah, tell me about that. What's the difference? Well, if I give you responsibility, I need to give you concurrent authority. Otherwise, as you try to move, you don't have the authority to get something done. And that's closely linked with the third thing, which is communication. Mm -hmm. If I delegate a project to you, you're going you're gonna to lead a team. And... I give you the authority to give assignments to the team and hold people accountable for their outcomes, but I don't tell the team. Then when you go to the team member and say, Hey, Joe, you need to do this. They're going, Hey, you're not my boss. <laughs> and, and it causes conflict and confusion. I actually had that experience once Mark a long, long, long time ago, but uh, you know, I had just taken over an operations manager role and, uh, and the org structure was shuffling a little bit mm -hmm. and I ended up with the responsibility uh, for purchasing and supply chain right. within, that, within that division. <laughs> and um, because it was a new move, the guy whose job it was, wasn't told that, oh, by the way, Pete's going to actually be your new direct boss rather Oops. than me, right? So, so like I was asking him questions and he's like, why are you asking me all this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm your boss. <laughs> but it didn't get communicated on day one like that. So, I, you know, it's comical now, but at the moment it was like confusion all around, right? Well, if you look at most of the issues, is a lot of managers kind of know what they should do. They don't know how to do it. I use those terms. And, and it becomes a real challenge for them. Yeah, sure does. So that's delegation. And that's the first of two conversations that you'll be having and leading through during the, the leadership half day uh, mm -hmm. workshop. Uh, let's talk about the other one, how to be that leader that is memorable, that people will always remember and say, wow, that guy was amazing or that gal was amazing. I'm so glad they were my boss. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I've published some articles on this. I'm working on a book and it's really for me a more simple concept because you can read lots of leadership books. Mm -hmm. But it occurred to me, and I started asking questions maybe 10 years ago as I'd be doing speaking, and there's five questions I ask. And the first one, uh, hold up your hand, and with the numbers of fingers, indicate how many terrific managers you've had in your career. Did you get a lot of this? I, uh, well, there's a, there is a group where there's none. Uh, the most I've seen is four, mm -hmm. and the average is two. Uh-huh. Now, I don't define terrific. I let them do it, but it's, it's enough that you're getting to the core of what it is. Right. The second question I say is, what were the qualities or characteristics that made them terrific? Mm -hmm. 
And, and back and forth, I'll hear some things. And the most often one is they were charismatic and dynamic. But the five qualities or characteristics that come through all the time are number one, they were subject matter experts. They knew their job. Number two, uh, they saw something in me that I didn't see in me, and they began to coach, develop, mentor me. They gave me positive and constructive feedback. So I always knew where I stood, and they supported me. Mm -hmm. The third one was they operated with integrity. And actually, integrity is normally one, but integrity. You could trust them. Right. You didn't always like what you heard, but what they told you was true. Yeah, and I can understand why that might be the first in your list. It is. I, I, I didn't quite jot it down, so when I don't have my PowerPoint, I'm working off the hype. Well, the good but, news is you, you will have your PowerPoint when you're there. No. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth thing is that they don't micromanage, which really goes to they trust the people who work for them, and they let them make mistakes. They let them learn. Mm -hmm. And the fifth one is they deal with the slackers. That, that the slackers are the ones who, you know, get dealt with because we've all worked on teams. We all know who the slackers are. And we're always wondering, like, why are they keeping that guy? How right. come the manager isn't dealing with him? I mean, is he washing his car on the side? What's going on? And those are the five things over and over and over that I hear. And I, I add and say, think about that. How many people here have a problem with lies, stealing, and cheating? Right? Okay, integrity's covered. Uh, how many people here know their job? You know, most hands go up. I said, well, that's two out of five. Now, then you get into the other three where it gets very challenging. Mm -hmm. and I, but I still say it's not hard. To me, hard is I, I'm NASA. I call you and I say, look, it, I'm going to let out a contract. I need you to invent a tile. It's never been invented before. And you're going to put it on the space shuttle so that it doesn't burn up coming on reentry. Oh, and by the way, you got to invent the glue to hold it. Now that's hard, right? It's never been done before. You have to invent it. And you need but, it next week. <laughs> yeah, but look at this. You're not going to lie, steal, and cheat. You're going to deal with the slackers. Uh, you're competent at your job. You're going to give me coaching and mentoring. What's hard about those? Because then the other question I ask is, if I had your team in the other room, a one-way mirror that you could hear and see, and I had them hold up their hand, and they did fingers, and I guess the next question is, your current manager one of those fingers? What would they say? Mm -hmm. In one fab tech, one guy screamed, yes, it's me, <laughs> right? But most of <laughs> people look down, look around, like, who's he talking to? And, and then I say, why aren't we the one? This is not hard stuff. And so the whole focus of this is making small changes so that you can be the one because it's not that hard, but the impact on people around you is so dramatic. So you'll walk us through in person exactly how to become that leader by implementing those five things. Yep. Perfect. Exactly. I love it. Excellent. Yeah. So if there's uh, you know, if there's one, and, and as you pointed out, it's not like developing a tile and the adhesive that ends up on a space shuttle. Um, it's not that hard. What's the most challenging thing that people do get tripped up on as they're following your methodology and becoming that leader? I think the one area most leaders struggle with, whether it's in that or anywhere else, is holding people accountable. Aha. Uh, Say more about that. Most leaders do not like to hold people accountable. They, they, especially for behavioral accountability. If it's things you do, you know, hitting your numbers, they're pretty good at that. But if it's misbehaving with the team, long smoke breaks, missing your commitments, showing up to work late, gossiping, um, you know, all those things, boy, so many leaders are so slow to deal with that. And the impact on the team is dramatic. Right. One of the questions I ask a lot of team members, I'll say, before you were a manager, when you were just a worker bee, did you know who the good team members were on your team? The people you go to who could help you, who you trusted, who carried the load? And they go, yes. And did you know who the slackers were? Yes. And what was your question 
for your manager about the slackers. Why are they still there? It's been a big problem because people hate to hold people accountable. Right. Yeah, you just built the case for accountability workshops for sure. Yeah. Because I, 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 t I teach a lot of accountability. I've written about a lot of accountability. And I'm sure you've run into it where you're coaching somebody and they've got crummy people and you're like, okay, uh, how long have they been bad? Oh, you know, and it's a long time. And what have you tried? Well, I've tried this, this, and this. Okay, why are they still here? Oh, uh, and you hear all the groaning and the face machinations and it's like, well, I might get somebody worse. And, and they really struggle with how to do that. Yeah, especially, you know, my world, which is a lot of business transformation and you know, projects that go on for extended periods of time. Obviously, you, you, we're working with the leaders <sighs> for, you know, transition period as well. So if they had to get, you know, clean out some of those people who aren't doing their job. And sure. Those exact excuses that you've talked about. We're at least able to coach and mentor through the hiring process and the, the growth process on the other side and getting everything in place. Those excuses that you highlighted, they're, yeah. you know, the, the, you didn't make those up for sure, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, they'll bend over backwards. And, and the issue is, and I'm sure you've done it where you've actually coached somebody or even stepped in to help them terminate somebody that has been bad for years. Yeah. And if that's, if that's what's required, um, you know, and unfortunately, as you pointed out, they don't have the skills to do that and they're not getting the support from their HR team. Yeah, well, it, I, I always start out with tails don't wag dogs. It starts at the top. And if the top doesn't demonstrate accountability, it, it's very difficult to have it in the organization, right? Because if you look at the CEO, it's the CEO holding the top team accountable. And if it isn't, you can see it right away because then it's just all through the organization. It's a ripple effect. Yes. Yes. Well, I'm glad I asked that question about the biggest challenge because the answer now that you've shared it is not a surprise to me. And hopefully to you listeners out there, it's not a surprise to you either. So yeah. um, just as a way of wrap up, so FabTech, the, the, uh, you know, check out the FabTech uh, website for more information about you know, how you could register to the expo, how you can register for this, this very specific leadership um, uh, collection symposium. Essentially, it's a half day uh, with, uh, with the set of speakers talking about various topics. And these are the two that Mark's talking about, talking about delegation and then how to be that unforgettable leader. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here today. And I am excited to see you uh, in a few short weeks. This is only about a month away. Yeah, you got it. All Same right. here. Take All care, right. everyone. All right. Thanks. Hey, Pete here again. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. And I invite you to come back. Come back to this video channel or go to the podcast channel for Business Results Radio. Check it out. Subscribe give a five-star review, and go ahead and share it with your friends. Until then, we'll see you again.